Hello, I'm Lisa Campion, and I'm the author of the number one best-selling book, The Art of Psychic Reiki, and Energy Healing for Empaths. Um, but I want to talk about Reiki today. So, so one of my students asked me, what is Reiki? How can we really know what it is? So um, I thought it was a great question. Let's talk about it a little bit. So Reiki is a gentle but powerful healing, hands-on healing energy technique from Japan that uses life force, this universal life force energy uh, to promote healing. Um, the Reiki works on three levels of the body, or really four. So it works on physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing, and spiritual healing. Sort of works with us mind, body, spirit. It's a really great technique to um, in, induce re relaxation for stress reduction and allows everyone to tap into this unlimited universal life force energy to improve health and enhance the quality of our life. So Reiki, um, if you study the kanji, it's from J Japan. So there's two kanji, the Japanese characters, Rei and Ki. Rei is the Japanese uh, character for spirit and Ki means energy. So spirit energy, if you put them together, but it's more generally interpreted to mean universal life force energy. Um, so that's what happens when practitioners learn Reiki is they learn to channel or tap into this universal supply of life force energy. So we're not using our own energy and then direct that to the clients or the Reiki recipients who benefit from that. Um, and when uh, generally Reiki treatments are done on people. So um, although you can do your animals, your pets, your food, plants, um, and at Reiki one, there's three levels of Reiki, but at Reiki level one, um, we learn it's super, super simple. Anyone can learn it. I've taught Reiki one um, to kids, you know, you don't have to be special. You don't have to be psychic. You don't have to be, although of course you guys all are special. Um, anyone can really learn it. So it's really very readily available. And, and where I live here on the East Coast, Reiki is used in all of the big city hospitals in Boston and Providence have Reiki um, staff on them full time. So like if you go to Brigham and Women's or Beth Israel in Boston, they have full time Reiki staff, um, quite a large full time Reiki staff because um, they have found there's been a lot of scientific studies that show that Reiki is very beneficial at um, helping people pre and post surgery, helping calm, bring calming and relaxation to people. And also um, like if you, if you have, if you go to Dana-Farber, one of the best cancer, cancer hospitals in the world, they have also full-time Reiki staff working there um, for people who are receiving their cancer treatments because they've done a lot of studies that show people who receive Reiki while they're receiving treatments fare better, they, they feel better, they don't have as many side effects from the treatments. Now, some people, when they receive a Reiki treatment, really feel uh, the energy moving through them. Some people are naturally, have a natural ability to feel energy. And if that's you, when you're receiving a Reiki treatment, you might feel tingling, pulsing, um, almost everyone feels heat. Um, some people describe it as like the sensation of water or energy flowing through them. Um, and not, lots of people can't feel that energy moving through them, but they do feel the results of the Reiki. And that would be a feeling of peace, of calm, um, a sort of a sense of well-being. People describe it as being, you're, you feel relaxed at the end of a Reiki session, but you don't feel enervated. You don't feel like, well, you've got to lie down and sleep for a million years to recover. You you can jump off, off the table feeling calm. I think that a lot of people um, use Reiki for, it's used in pain clinics now because we're always searching for uh, non-narcotic ways to use um, to tell people who are in pain and Reiki is fantastic for that as well as treat, treatment of anxiety and depression. Um, and I find it's really helpful for people that just have general levels of stress. And the way that it works is in two ways really, is that it brings about the body's natural healing response. So when we get really relaxed, our body is a self-healing mechanism. So when we relax, it tends to kick our body into its self-healing. Um, and it, it brings this life force energy, this chi, through us. So when we have increased oxygen, increased circulation, um, and that can also bring about the body's own healing capabilities. There are quite a few ways you can receive a Reiki treatment. Um, you can be sitting in a chair and have your pr practitioner 
work on either touching your body or working with their hands hovering over your body. I've done a lot of chair um, Reiki, which I call kitchen table Reiki, because it's when somebody comes over to your house and they're crying at your kitchen table or they're feeling stressed about something and they're sitting in a chair when they receive it. Reiki can also be done more formally in a treatment session. Um, and that would be, you come into a practitioner's office, you lie on the Reiki table, you don't have to get undressed. And the same um, thing will happen where the, the Reiki practitioner will move down your body. They usually work from the head and move down either with their hands on your body or hovering over your body. And they will hopefully ask you for permission to touch before they do. Um, we can do a whole session off somebody's working, just hovering in their energy field. And um, that treatment usually lasts half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your practitioner. And uh, for most people, it sort of lights out. Like you'll have um, an incredibly, you become incredibly relaxed and people fall asleep. Some people have um, a, 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 an emotional release, which means you may cry or um, have some emotions wash through you, which is really beneficial. We know that emotional releases are very healthy and when emotions stay trapped in the body, they can contribute to um, stressors and health um, problems we have in the body. So, um, you know, it's going to work on helping you release any stuck emotions, calming your thinking down too. Also, Reiki can be done long distance. So right now, especially right now during this time of the pandemic, many Reiki practitioners have gone from giving up their offices and are working remotely now. You can uh, have an incredibly powerful session long distance where you're sitting at home on your couch and or lying on your bed and the practitioner is working at you from across the country, across the world, across the room, across the house. And um, you still receive an, an, um, just as much of a benefit as if you were there in person. In fact, there have been studies done that say perhaps even a better outcome for a long distance Reiki, although I still like working in person. But it's fantastic to know that um, dis distance doesn't seem to be an object in the benefits of Reiki. So you might be interested in receiving a Reiki treatment, which I totally recommend that you do, or you might be interested in learning Reiki. Um, and it's easy to learn. Um, so I teach online classes, Reiki 1 two, and 2 online in um, six to eight hours of online training you can get. I also teach in-person Reiki. And you would want to learn Reiki, Reiki level one, especially it has self-healing um, practice. So you can, you can learn quickly how to do healing work on yourself. And you can also do Reiki on your friends, your family, your pets, your food, your plants. Um, and there's actually two more levels of Reiki after that. Reiki two is called the practitioner level. That's really good for people that work already with their hands on people, nurses, estheticians, um, hairdressers. If you're touching people, this is a good one. Or if you want to have a Reiki practice and become a Reiki practitioner, um, that's a, a very powerful level to learn. And then Reiki master is the third level. That level you learn how to um, teach Reiki and um, and also pass the ability to do Reiki to other people. Reiki is passed from teacher to student in a process called an attunement. And that is, it's sort of a, um, kind of like a spiritual initiation. It, the, um, the teacher Reiki master uses some Reiki techniques to permanently change your energy field in a way that allows you to connect to this frequency of Reiki, which by the way, is the frequency of unconditional love. I think that's why it feels so good. It's pretty hard to get unconditional love here, <laughs> down here on planet earth. I always say children under two, golden retrievers and Reiki is the way that you get a form of unconditional love. So I think that's partly why it's so healing. So people sometimes ask me, well, can I be doing Reiki even though I have never been attuned? And the answer is no. You can't. You may be passing energy. Um, you may have a natural healing ability, but it's not Reiki unless you have the attunement. The problem with doing it on your own is that sometimes what happens is we give up our own energy, like massage therapists or especially people who are touching other people tend to give our own chi, our own life force energy, um, which may be why you feel so tired at the end of working. And learning Reiki can really help with that because it allows us to connect with this universal life force energy. So we're not giving our own energy, but really um, uh, tapping into this life force energy. 
I can tell you a few things too that you might want to know. Reiki is not a religion. Um, it's really compatible with any religious beliefs that you have. Um, it's not going to force you to believe something that you don't want to believe. Uh, it's not particularly connected with any religion. It's more of a healing modality like acupuncture is, right? So I think that Reiki can be very compatible with whatever your faith tradition already is. And now let's talk about what is psychic Reiki. So I wrote this book, The Art of Psychic Reiki. What is psychic Reiki and how is it different from regular Reiki? Well, what I noticed is that because I've taught over a thousand people Reiki in the 22 years that I've been teaching Reiki, um, what I noticed is that learning Reiki tends to open up our latent sensitivity. So if you're an empath, you may get become more sensitive. If you're intuitive, you're gonna, you may become more intuitive. And if you have psychic ability, um, it, it might also bloom, especially at Reiki level two, tends to really pop open people's psychic ability. And um, sometimes what happens is when people pop open like that and they don't expect it, they feel lost, they can feel scared or confused about what's happening, or maybe even they stop practicing Reiki because they're too freaked out and upset by whatever psychic things they're experiencing. And this, I think, is quite sad and a terrible loss because Deeply sensitive people, empaths, psychics, intuitives are almost always very gifted healers. And I believe more than anything that the world needs all the healers it can get. So um, when I started practicing um, as a psychic over 30 years ago, um, I, I I did that for quite, a, quite some time and really um, found that uh, weaving energy work into my psychic sessions was really, really helpful for me. So to me, it was a natural combination to do both of them together. Um, and one time I was teaching Reiki to somebody who told me, um, oh, I, I learned that like five years ago, but it really opened my psychic. I felt like it opened something in me and, and it was really scary for me. So I stopped doing it. I, I backed away from it because I, I, my Reiki teacher didn't know how to handle it and didn't think it was a good idea. I didn't think it was cool that that was happening. So I stopped practicing Reiki and I, I thought that was really sad. She's a fantastically talented healer. And I just was like, wow, she just needs to know some things. Um, she needs to be trained and taught how to um, combine these two in a safe and effective way. So psychic Reiki weaves together traditional Reiki training and psychic developments. And it's a perfect situation for the dilemma of what do you do when your um, sensitivity increases or your psychic pop up, your psychic ability pops up and in that you don't know what to do. So anyway, that's the story about what is Reiki and what is psychic Reiki. Thanks for watching.